Hey guys, welcome to Coding in Flow. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use Retrofit, which is a very popular Android and Java library that makes it pretty easy to send and retrieve data from a web service. It provides an abstraction layer over HTTP cards and automatically generates all the complicated low-level networking code for us. We simply have to create a Java interface that contains method declarations for the different network operations that we want to do on the server, add some annotations to these methods, and Retrofit then generates the actual implementation for them. If some of these terms sound confusing to you, don't worry. Retrofit is actually pretty easy to use, and the tutorial will be understandable without any pre-knowledge about networking on Android. And you also don't have to know about HTTP servers and all that stuff. Basic Java and Android knowledge should be enough to follow along. We will start with a simple GET request, which basically just means that we retrieve data from a server and display it in our app. And then we will step by step explore more retrofit features in the upcoming parts, like how we can send data to a server. We will not create a real app with a lot of features in this tutorial, and we will also not care about proper app architecture here, because this is just about the retrofit functionality itself. But in the future I will also release tutorials where we implement retrofit in more realistic examples, and combine it with other concepts and libraries, particularly with the Android architecture components. If you follow this tutorial, then you should also watch the architecture components tutorial, because in most real apps nowadays you will be using both. And there are a lot of similarities between the Room Persistence library that we use there and Retrofit. Room is basically to SQLite what Retrofit is to web services. When you click on the little eye in the top right corner of this video, you can find a link to the Android Architecture Components tutorial. Okay, and as usual, I will put a link to the code for each part in the description box under each video. And there I will also put links to two websites. The first one is the Retrofit GitHub page, where you can find some simple instructions and when we scroll down, under download, we can find the dependency, which we later have to add to our app. And if we scroll up a bit, we get to something called converters. And these are the libraries that are responsible to turn the response we get from the server into Java objects and vice versa. We can choose between different ones and we will use JSON. So we need this dependency here as well. And the second website will be jsonplaceholder.typeycode.com, which is a fake online REST API that we can use for testing purposes. And REST API in a nutshell means that this is a web service that uses HTTP to communicate between a client and a server. This is not the whole definition of REST, but we don't have to go into the details here. But you can also use a different REST API for your example, and there are thousands of different ones available online, and major sites like GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, and so on also have REST APIs. If you want to get the most out of this tutorial, I would encourage you to choose a different REST API and build your own example, because then you will learn much better than just typing the same code as I do. But if you want, you can choose this one. And here when we scroll down, we get to roots, which are these different URLs that represent the different endpoints of this API. So this is where we can get data from and make changes to the data. In the first video, we will use this one here, slash posts, which brings us to the base URL and slash posts as the suffix. And here we can find a very big JSON. I have a separate five minute tutorial where I explain JSON in more detail, which you can also find in the info card box. But just as a summary, JSON is the data format we use to communicate between our app and the server. And it's the one that is most commonly used nowadays because other data formats can easily be turned into a JSON or vice versa. So it's a bit like English, almost everyone speaks it, and we can use it to communicate with each other without you having to understand German or me having to speak your language. Everything here that is between curly braces represents a JSON object, which contains different key value pairs, and this is the equivalent to a single Java object, where the key on the left side would be the variable name, and the value on the right side after the colon would be the value of the variable in Java. And this whole JSON file is surrounded by square brackets, which stands for JSON array, which just like a Java array, is just a sequence of multiple values separated by commas. So this is an array of multiple JSON objects. And in our app, we will then turn this into a list of Java objects. So you can already remember title, body, user ID and ID, because we will recreate this later as a class in our Android project. Okay, I have already created a new Android Studio project, but I haven't changed anything yet. The first thing we have to do is add the Gradle dependencies. So we go into the Gradle scripts folder, open build.gradle with module colon app. 
And from the retrofit page, we copy paste these two dependencies I showed you earlier, retrofit and the JSON converter. When we have added this, we click sync now, wait a short moment until it's finished syncing, and then we are ready to go. Okay, the next step is to create a model class for the single posts that we will then retrieve from the web service. So we go into the app folder, into Java, open our package, right click on the package and create a new Java class. So each JSON object represents a post, so we will name it post here as well. We don't have to change anything else and click OK. OK, and we said that each post contains a string for the title, a string for the body, which is basically the text of this post, and two integers, user ID and ID. OK, so let's recreate this in our project. First, we create a private int user ID a private int idea, a private string title, and another private string for the body, but we will name it text here, because I find this name more fitting. And if the JSON key and the variable name differ, then we can annotate this with serialized name, which is a JSON annotation. And here we simply pass the key of the JSON in form of a string. So now the JSON parser knows that our text string is supposed to be the body value of the JSON. I have a separate video tutorial on JSON where I explain the features in a bit more detail. It's not necessary that you watch this tutorial to understand the retrofit series, but I would recommend it. Okay, and then we need getter methods for these values. So we can later get these values out of the post objects and display them in our app. For simplicity, we will leave the setter methods out here because we don't need them. And we right click on an empty place. Go to Generate, click on Getter, and now we select all four values by holding Shift down, like this, and we click OK. And now Android Studio Auto generated these four Getter methods for our four member variables. OK, that's our post class. With Retrofit, we will later retrieve the post array from the REST API. And the JSON converter will take care of turning these post JSON objects into post Java objects. Okay, and to later display all this stuff in our app, let's make some quick changes to our activity main XML layout file. Down here we switch over to the text tab. And we will display our data in this text view that we already have. In a real app, of course, you would use a recycler view to display a large set of data. But for simplicity, we will just use this text view. Let's make the text color black with text color hashtag 000. So it's a bit better visible. We give this text view an idea, Android colon ID at plus ID slash. Let's call it text underscore view underscore result or whatever you want. Let's also remove the text and we wrap it in tour and nested scroll view with match parent width and height because the text view will get bigger than the screen. So we can use the nested scroll view to make it scrollable. We take this closing tag here, cut it out and put it below the text view. So it's wrapped into this nested scroll view. Lastly, we give our layout itself a padding of ADP. And then we press alt Control l to rearrange everything and format the code properly. Okay, so we have the layout ready and our post class. And the next step is to create a Java interface that then represents the API of the web service in our app. So again, we right click on our package and create a new Java class. And since our fake REST API is called JSON placeholder, let's call it JSON placeholder API. And we have to change class to interface. We don't change anything else and click OK. Then we go into this interface and create one method. It will return a call object. This one here, which says retrofit tour. We make a pair of angle brackets. And for the type we pass, list, another pair of angle brackets, and then we write post. Because this is what we want to get back from this call, a list of posts, which is a JSON array of post JSON objects that we saw earlier. We have to give this method the name, let's call it get posts, parenthesis, semicolon. Because in a Java interface, we don't provide a method body, we just declare these methods here. And whatever later implements this interface has to provide a body for these methods. And this is what Retrofit will take care of. It will auto-generate all the necessary code we need to get our list of posts back. And to tell Retrofit what to do, we have to annotate this method. 
And this is the get request, which means that we want to get data from the server. So we annotate it with add, get in capital letters, parentheses, and here we pass posts as a string. Because if we take a look at the URL again, we see that it's json placeholder typecode.com slash posts. This part here is the base URL and post is the relative URL. The reason that we only define the relative URL in our interface is because we will pass the base URL at a different place later. Okay, so back into our project. We only need the relative URL where we get our list of posts from. And this is already it for the interface. Retrofit will later generate all the necessary code for this method. And if you have watched my Android architecture components tutorial, then this looks pretty similar to what we do with Room. There we also provide interfaces and annotate them. And there they are called DAO. But with Room it's for SQLite. And with Retrofit it's for web services. Okay, and this call object here encapsulates a single request and response. So later we will use this call object to execute the actual GET request. But you will see this in a few minutes. We will do all of this in our main activity, so let's switch over to this class. And again, that we do it in our main activity is just for presentational purposes, because this is not proper app architecture. But there is no point in loading this tutorial up with a lot of other code, so we keep it simple. And the first thing we do is create a text view variable for our text view result. We have to sign it in on create, text view result, find you by idea the usual way. And below we will execute our actual get request. For this we first need an instance of retrofit. So we write retrofit, we call it retrofit, equals new retrofit dot builder. We don't put a semicolon here yet and I'm gonna continue in the next line. Then we call dot base URL. Because as I explained before, our interface only contains the relative URL and here is the place where we define the base URL, where we want to append this relative URL on. And this is of course our JSON placeholder typecode.com in form of a string. No semicolon here either. Then we write add convert a factory. This is how we define that we want to use JSON to pass the response. And here we write JSON convert a factory dot create. And lastly we call dot build semicolon. And with this retrofit instance here, we can now create our JSON placeholder API. So below we write JSON placeholder API, let's call it JSON placeholder API equals, and since this is just an interface, we can of course not call new JSON placeholder API without providing the actual method implementation ourselves. But this is the job of retrofit. So we write retrofit.create and pass the name of the class, JSON placeholder API.class. And retrofit will then bring life into these methods that we just declared without a body. Okay, and to execute our network request, we have to use the call object that I showed you earlier. So we write call, again of type list, of type post. We call this variable call, equals, then we take our JSON placeholder API, and then we can call our get posts method, because retrofit creates the implementation for this method. And then we simply have to execute this call and get our response back. So we write call dot but we don't call dot execute because this method will run synchronously, which means it will be executed on whatever thread we are currently on. And we are on the main thread. And if we try to do network operations on the main thread, we will get an exception because this would completely freeze our app. Instead, we have to execute it on the background thread. But of course, we don't have to create this thread ourselves. Retrofit provides a convenience method for this, which is called nq. And here we have to pass a newer callback where we have an on response callback and on failure. On failure means that something went wrong in the communication with the server or processing the response. For example, when we make a typo in the base URL or when the JSON that we get back doesn't fit to whatever we are trying to pass it into. For example, when we try to pass a JSON array into a single Java object. If this is the case, we will simply display the error message in our text view. So we write text result dot z text and here we paste here which is the throwable that we get passed here. Throwable is just a superclass of exception and error. And then we call dot get message. So if something fails, we get a good idea on what went wrong. We won't do anything else in on failure. And now we take care of on response. And this method will be triggered when we get a response back from the server. But this doesn't mean that our request was successful because the server could, for example, respond with a 404 code 
which means that whatever data we were looking for is not there. And if you use the internet regularly, then you already know 404 responses, because you get it, for example, when you try to access a website that has been deleted. So what we will do in here first is we will check if exclamation mark response, which is the response that we get passed from this method, dot is successful. This means that the HTTP code is somewhere between 200 and 300, and we found whatever we were looking for. Curly braces. If this was not successful, we will simply set our text result to the response code. So we have an idea of what went wrong. Set text. Let's write code as a string and we append response.code, which is the HTTP code that we get back. And then we will call return to leave this method right here because the actual data from this response will be null if this was not successful. And if we try to do any operations on null, as you already know, we get a null pointer exception and our app crashes. So whatever we write below this if statement will only be executed if our call was successful and we didn't get any other error. So let's take a look at this response variable again. We already know code and is successful. And as we can see here, body contains a list of posts. This is what we actually want to get back. So let's create a list of posts. We call it posts equals response.body. This is the data that we actually want to get from the web service. And then we want to display it in our text view. We iterate through the single posts for post post colon posts for each post in our posts list. We want to append the data to our text view. So we create a string, let's call it content. We set it to an empty string and then we append all the data. Content plus equals to append something to the string. And then we want to append our four different values. User ID, ID, title and body. So let's start with the ID, ID colon space plus, and now we can get the ID out of our post object with our normal getter method, like this. Let's also append another string with backslash n, so we make a line break, and then we continue in the next line, content plus equals. And this is not an efficient way of building a string, by the way, but again, this is just for presentational purposes. Next is the user ID. And then the title. And the text, which is the body in our JSON. And then I append two line breaks because then the next object starts. And lastly, we set this on our text view, but not with set text, with dot append. So we don't overwrite each previous post. And here we simply pass our content string. And this is our first get request. If everything went correctly, we should get a list of posts from our JSON array. On the endpoint we defined in this get posts method in our JSON placeholder API. And the only thing left to do is adding internet permission, because otherwise we will get an exception. So we go into our manifest file and here at the top above application, we write opening anchor bracket uses permission and we use this one here, internet slash closing anchor bracket. And we are done. So let's test it. Okay. On the left, we can see the JSON on our posts endpoint. And as soon as we start our app, we should display the same data in our activity because we execute everything directly in onCreate. So let me start it. And there it is. This is the same data that we can see on this endpoint. We used Retrofit to load it from there into our app. And we used JSON to turn this JSON array into a list and these JSON objects into Java objects. And then we used our normal getter methods to get the values out of these Java objects and display them in our text view. Okay, if this was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts of the Retrofit tutorial. Take care.